Mole woke up one morning in a glum mood. He hated spring cleaning. He decided he'd rather go visit his friend Rat at the river bank. When he reached the river bank, Mole basked in the bright orange sun. He had a feeling he was being watched. The water rat came out of a dark cave, greeted his old friend, and invited him to a picnic lunch. Rat rowed his tiny boat to a shady spot on the bank. Mole spread out a red blanket and sat down to eat. They ate pasta salad, Hungarian goulash, pepperoni pizza, and pickled tongue. Mole and Rat were very full from their lunch. On their way back home, Mole asked Rat if he could row the boat. Rat said no. Mole was angry. He wanted to give it a try, but Rat wouldn't budge. Mole grabbed the oars too quickly, and the entire boat flipped over. Mole and Rat were soaking wet. Mole and Rat went back to Rat's house to dry off. They sat in front of the fireplace and warmed their wet feet. Mole said he was sorry, and Rat forgave him. Shortly, they drifted off to sleep. One day, Mole asked Rat if they could visit Toad. Toad lived in a big mansion five miles down the river. They climbed into Rat's modest boat and rowed to Toad Hall. Toad was outside feeding the ducks. Toad invited Mole and Rat inside for some lunch. He told them about a yellow caravan that he furnished for an adventure abroad. Toad asked them to join him on a cross-country trip. Mole and Rat were very excited. They packed some things into the wagon and set off. On the first night of their journey, Mole, Rat, and Toad camped under the stars. There was plenty of food, sleeping bags, and blankets. They had a great time. The next morning, Toad did not do his fair share of cleaning up. Mole and Rat were disappointed. The next day, they came across a dusty open road. All of a sudden, a racy motor car sped up behind them and knocked the little caravan over. No one was injured, but the wagon was now a worthless heap of trash. Mole shook his head in sorrow, Rat yelled at the reckless driver, and Toad sat in the middle of the road, dazed and filled with wonder. After they reported the accident to the police, Mole, Rat, and Toad went to the nearest car dealership. The salesman showed Toad all of the latest models. Toad picked the fastest and most expensive car on the lot, without even taking it for a test drive. Toad raced out of town with Mole and Rat in the back seat. They couldn't wait to get back to the riverbank. One day, Mole wanted to go to the Wild Wood. Rat said it was a very dangerous place and that he shouldn't go alone. While Rat was taking a nap, Mole crept out of the house to journey on his own. Mole walked alone through the wild wood and realized that Rat was right. It was a dangerous place. He kept hearing scary noises and was frightened by large trees, all bent and gnarled. They looked like monsters. Rat woke up from his nap. He called for Mole, but there was no answer. When he looked outside, he noticed Mole's footprints in the snow. They were headed in the direction of the wild wood. Quickly, he put on his galoshes and coat and set out to find Mole. Rat found Mole hiding behind a large rock. Mole was very happy to see Rat. They began their journey back to the river, but were stopped in their tracks by a sudden massive snowstorm. Mole and Rat wearily trudged through the snow. Mole had to stop and rest, for he had a terrible cramp in his leg. Rat noticed that they had stopped at a familiar place, Badger's house. Rat and Mole knocked on Badger's door loudly. Badger came to the door and brought his two friends inside. He made them dinner and gave them a room to sleep in for the night. The next morning, Mole and Rat woke up to find that they had slept in. They went into the kitchen to find a small hedgehog eating some oatmeal. He was lost on his way to school. Soon, Badger came out of his study and joined everyone for some breakfast. 
Later on, Otto arrived at Badger's house looking for Mole and Rat. He sat down and began rehashing Old River stories with Rat. Mole and Badger soon became bored and decided to strike up a conversation of their own. Badger and Mole found that they had a lot in common. They were both used to living underground. Badger gave Mole a tour of his home, which turned out to be very large indeed. Badger made many tunnels leading here and there with dozens of rooms. It made Mole rather homesick. The time came for Mole and Rat to leave Badger's home. The snow had stopped and Otter was willing to travel with them to make sure they arrived home safely. They thanked Badger for his hospitality and promised to visit again someday. Otter stood by the ford looking for his young son, Portly, who had not come home for dinner. Otter was very worried. He invited Rat over to put together a search party. Rat and Otter devised a plan. Rat told Otter to keep watch by the ford. He and Mole would row down the river with searchlights to look for Portly. Rat tried to put Otter's mind at ease. Mole and Rat climbed into the tiny rowboat and began their search for Portly. The moon shone brightly casting shadows of large trees over the water. The wind whistled through the reeds in perfect rhythm with the crickets that chirped in the night. As they rode on, Mole remembered the legend of the piper at the gates of dawn. He was a kind creature who protected those who lost their way. They came to a place in the river, an unknown island shrouded with trees. They saw little portly nestled under an oak tree with a golden pan pipe at his feet. When they reached the ford, Portly got out of the boat and ran into his father's arms. Otter waved to Mole and Rat in thanksgiving, happy at last with his son safe and sound. Mole and Rat returned home, quite proud of the good deed they had accomplished. Toad was out gallivanting in his new motor car for months on end. In the meantime, Stoats and Weasels had invaded Toad Hall. They were making a mess of Toad's beautiful home which had been in his family for generations. Toad was driving home from one of his many adventures when he spotted Rat flagging him down from the roadside. Rat told him about the stoats and weasels. Toad became very depressed. They picked up Mole and went to Badger's house. Badger thought of a plan. He knew that Toad Hall was surrounded by many secret underground passageways. They could sneak into Toad Hall through one of the passageways and scare the crafty weasels away. Rat and Mole gathered some sheets and pumpkin heads from Badger's Halloween closet. When they got to the tunnel, they began to make ghostly oh. moans, and soon the ruckus from upstairs began to quiet down. Dressed as goblins, they sprang up through a trap door in the middle of Toad's banquet hall, screaming, Boo! All of the stoats and weasels ran out in terror. Toad was happy to be back home again. Toad had a party in honor of his friends who helped him reclaim Toad Hall. He hired a 12-piece band and the finest caterers in town. He invited everyone except for the stoats and weasels. They were hired as valets. A great time was had by all.